all that Gio is a good meal, man. Eggy meal was good. It was eggy, eggy, eggy. text and drive ladies and gentlemen so i was i was trying to drive to the all-state arena and let everybody that deserved to, uh, to know that was in my orbit know what was about to happen so i texted my sisters you know because nobody knew you know that's how you that's how you get things done in this business you know you, you, you keep things close to the best you know leak stuff uh, and that's where the magic happens you know and it was a magical moment and there was so many things going through my head you know, the, the, the nerves, um, people I haven't seen in 10 years, uh, you, you know, I had questions, concerns, maybe even worries, and then was all just this album could be instant. That song hit, called the personality, and I walked out in front of my hometown. I couldn't hear the song anymore. I didn't know my cues. You always, as a performer, try to hit your cues based on the song, like where we're at. Where's Corey Glover at right now? Okay, I'm going to do this. This is what I get. Now. This is what I say. It's clever. All of it went out the window. I couldn't hear the song. I just heard the people. It was a very magical moment. Well, you got to practice some of those cues because for the first time in nearly a decade, you returned to In Reaction at the WWE Holiday Tours. You performed in both Madison Square Garden and the Kia Forum. What was it like getting back there and being on both coasts? It was amazing, you know. <laughs> Call them live events now is how old I am. They're hot shows to me. They probably almost will be. Um, they were my bread and butter. You know, TV is one thing. TV is a whole nervous ball of energy. You know, um, everybody's worried about uh, sticking to you know times on television. And you 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 have you have a lot of bosses. When I'm on house shows, I don't have a boss. I get to have fun, and it just brings me back to starting wrestling in the first place. The reason why you do it is for some reason you're drawn to doing this. And I got to just have fun in a relaxed atmosphere in front of some people that were super excited to see me, and I got to punch pretty down in the face on one of day's work. Uh, thank you for that on behalf of the entire WWE Universe. Won't be as relaxed in a little over three weeks. You will take part in your seventh Royal Rumble match nearly ten years to the day of your last televised match, the 2014 Royal Rumble. What's the anticipation like for you heading into a match with high stakes for many reasons? Um, it's just going to be just like walking out in front of the Chicago audience for uh, Survivor Series. I think there's a lot of uh, ghosts I'm trying to put to bed. And it's almost kiss you, know, you couldn't write a better story like back in 10 years later. Um, and, you know, my good buddy Cody likes to say he's, you know, going to finish his story. Uh, to me, this is finishing what I started. This is picking back up where I left off uh, 10 years wiser and still all that experience that I have inside the Royal Rumble and inside the rest of it is going to come in handy. It still doesn't feel real heat back, brother. Yeah. That's that's the right. Royal Rumble and right. going to WrestleMania. At least that's the plan. You know, I know there's 29 other guys that are going to do their best to stop me, but I, I, I'm supremely confident. Well, talking about that story going back 10 years, for those that may not remember, you entered that rumble at number one. The man who started that match with you was the current World Heavyweight Champion, Seth Freakin' Rollins. A lot has transpired for both of you over the last decade. How did you view Seth back then? Uh, I viewed Seth as somebody who was following in my footsteps. You know, I think there's a lot of people uh, in wrestling as a whole that are in the WWE now that, for better or for worse, I think looked up to a guy like me. Um, I always like to thank the legends that helped pave the way for the roads that I travel now. Guys like uh, Terry Funk, Eddie Guerrero, you know, Bret Hart, uh, Tracy Smothers, uh, Chris Candido. There's a litany of guys that I always feel that I wouldn't have gotten the opportunities uh, that I got if it weren't for them, um, I don't know, I guess I'm in a position where it feels maybe strange me vocalizing it, but I think Seth is a guy, at least I definitely thought it 10 years ago, that he's a dude that I don't think would have gotten the opportunities that he has gotten, 
if it wasn't for me, you know. Um, Damn. That might hurt some people's feelings, uh, but facts are facts. They don't care about your feelings. Now, Punk, when you decided to become a member of the Raw roster at the end of last year, you were immediately confronted by Seth, and he came right out and said that he hates you. Do you believe that that hate is warranted? Uh, no, I have. What Seth honestly feels about me is none of my business. That's how I approach it. Um, uh, it maybe he's jealous. Maybe he's envious. Uh, it's not for me to, to decide and figure out. You know, luckily there's a ring, and a lot of the times, if you have differences with somebody, you get to settle it in the ring. Uh, the Rumble is in my immediate future. Um, if Seth is still champion by the time that is all said and done and the dust clears, you know, maybe we can talk again about it. Maybe we can settle things in the ring. Uh, Punk, obviously, you have a lot on your plate in the ring on Monday night. You'll be back on Raw this Monday. But i got to ask you this personal question. A big part of your life away from the ring is your dog, Larry. How's he recovering from the ACL injury? Uh, oh, gosh. He's, uh, he's doing so much better. I wonder where he is. Hey, Larry. I don't know where he is. I think, uh, I think my better half has him locked away in a room somewhere so he doesn't interrupt the, uh, the interview. I should have brought him with us. Uh, he's doing much better. He's had a, a string of really, really good days. Um, he, had a, he had a rough couple of months. I don't know if it was harder on me uh, in April or it was harder on him, but he's trying to jump back on the couch now. That's how he got hurt in the first place, so we just got to keep an eye on him still. But he's doing a lot better. I appreciate you asking. Well, you tell Larry next time you're on a show, he can join any time. But, Punk, if you can win the Royal Rumble, you're that much closer to your goal of main eventing WrestleMania. So. What would it mean to you to finally reach such an important accolade? Gosh. Um, you know, I, I think it all kind of got set off with the, the, the Shawn Michaels boyhood dream. You know, when I wanted to be a wrestler, I just wanted to be a wrestler. I didn't, I didn't really have goals outside of that. And then as you progress in the business, those goals grow, you know. One of my goals used to be wrestle every weekend, you know. <laughs> And it's just like you, you, you do that and then you start flying places and you start going to different countries and um, dare I say mastering your craft but then realizing that you're going to learn something new every day and that's the magical thing about the business is I'm constantly learning so every experience uh, helps me move forward down the path that I'm on and it's made me realize I set goals very very early in my career that are terrifying they're scary and what 10 years away from WWE has showed me is I set those goals and they were so big and they were so scary that I could not accomplish them until I grew into the person that could. And I'm back now. And I've grown into the person that can accomplish those goals and can handle all the responsibilities that come with it. And I'm looking forward to competing with 29 other guys and throwing 29 other guys over the top rope. You said I was number one in the, run, the last rumble I was in, I don't know what number I'm going to be. I always love those those moments where you got the, the, the big lotto balls and you, you got the, the, the big face. Oh. You, somebody's turning the crank. It's a tumbler. Choosing numbers, that was always fascinating to me and intriguing when I was a fan. Uh, I would love to do that again. But honestly, being number one again is is appealing to me. I wouldn't I wouldn't look at that as a hindrance. I know a lot of guys would, but I'm training my ass off and I'm going to come back uh, in you know best shape I possibly can be to win the whole thing. CM Punk, thank you so much for the Thanks. time. Welcome back. We are